how many of you watch the GNOME Users and Developers European Conference? Of those who do watch it, how many of you remembered that was the full name of Guardec? And for those people, how many of you realised the name was pronounced Guardec? Typically, I don't watch it. Not because there's anything wrong with it, but I'm not a GNOME user. I'm not a GNOME developer, and anything really exciting that comes from the conference is usually going to get a write-up by someone else, and then I can talk about it later. But this year, there was one section in particular that grabbed my attention. This section, called GNOME Design, State of the Union, specifically the part by Tobias Bernard. In this section, he explains the general issues with floating windows. Unless you are heavily reliant on workspaces, they are incredibly messy. You have windows on top of windows, windows that are half off the screen, windows you lose track of because there's a bunch of windows on top of them. It's just kind of a nightmare. Now, you can keep things really neat and tidy. I know some people that do. But I know a lot of people who have a desktop that looks exactly like this. Also, why should you be worrying about tidying up your desktop when you can just automate the process and have your computer do it for you? I'm going to play the video. I'm not going to cut off Tobias. I'll let him go through each of the sections and then add in additional context. And so for quite some time, we thought about like how this could be improved. And I think a frequent thing that, that people like bring up in this context is like, well, we can just uh, tile everything, right? Like tiling is a solution. And, um, that is interesting, right? Because you put stuff next to each other, so it's not that messy by default. But depending on like the hardware configuration, like very large monitors or certain types of apps, like need specific aspect ratios and so on, like that's also not like something you can easily do automatically. And we think maybe we've come up. That's especially true when it comes to things like games. There are a lot of games out there which are very particular about the window size they are given. Some games are happy to, you know, take a smaller window and then run at a lower resolution and have giant black bars around the window. Other games assume, well, if this is the window size I'm given, I guess that's the resolution I should run at. Leading games to run at weird resolutions like 753 by 207. And you're like, why are you doing that? Stop. When you're playing a game, basically your only options on a tiler are swapping the window into floating mode and let the application, you know, control the resolution itself, or the better option, only ever run games at full screen and never even try anything else. The worst case is when you open it up and it's not in full screen, and now it assumes it should just lower the resolution in the settings, so every time you start up the game, you have to reset your settings. Another annoying case are windows that have a set size that do not change. This is often the case with very simple login prompts and very simple scientific applications which just have a GUI, but are not made to be very flexible. The way these are handled are very much tile dependent. Some of them will just put a giant black box around it, trying to fill in the space that it assumes a window should be in. Other tilers will not have anything there, but assume the window is still the same regular size, and then try to tile things around it, and you have all of this wasted space that the tiler has no idea it can use. Once again, neither of these cases are good, and neither of these cases are optimal. There is surely a better way to handle this, and GNOME may have a better way. Keep in mind what you're about to see is a very early mock-up. This is not implemented in GNOME, this is just an example of how it could be working. So it's still very much up for debate on the exact functionality and the tweaking and additional things you might want to see. With that being said, Let's have a look at what Tobias has to say. Oh, it is. Oh, right. No, it's not. They're having some tech okay, so issues. The way it works is like you open the first window, it's centered. You open the second window, it all centers together. You open more windows, they all center in like a nice layout. And then as you close them, same thing happens in the opposite. Um, and then if you maximize something or open a large window, what happens is it automatically moves it to a workspace, so you don't have to like sort of yeah move the maximize stuff away or like find the thing below the thing and stuff like that. And so we like also naturally integrate like workspaces with all of that, and you can of course also tile stuff to the actual edges of the display. Uh, the videos are not it's doing us any favors. Yeah, I know, but okay. So yeah, you can drag stuff to the side of the display, and then um, the other windows basically move aside so that they're also not covered by it. 
Um, but if there's too many windows, right, if they're like too large, then uh, you can sort of, like, it scales them down, and you can pick one of them to be the tiling partner. Or you can also drag windows sort of like onto a tiled thing and split that in half. So basically you can get any kind of uh, arbitrarily complex uh, tiling setups that way. Now, uh, I realize this is all uh, very far out, and that's why the like, uh, mock-ups or the, the videos are like, very low fidelity. Uh, thanks to Jakob, by the way, for making these. It's a very cool way. Otherwise, there's no way to explain any of this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Jakob. And, I mean, this is all very early stage stuff. We have discussed it with shell developers um, sort of at a very basic level. There's some discussions for how this could be made to work, but it's all fairly far away and, yeah, needs, needs more work for sure. Uh, but yeah, we have a block. So, a lot was just said there in a very short amount of time. Let's go back through it. Okay, this is very much a system of tiling, just not tiling in the same sense as something like Awesome WM, BSPWM, Hyperland, or other dynamic tilers. So on my desktop, if I make a window, they are going to use up the entire space of the desktop. Whereas in this case, it seems like it's more spiraling around the center and also trying to respect the sizes the windows want to open in themselves rather than forcing them into a specific size as defined by the window manager. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know of any other tilers using this system. And I don't mean a manual tiler where you force windows manually into this layout. I mean another dynamic tiler that places windows like this. This, I think, is a really interesting way to approach tiling. I don't know if it's going to be a good idea. That is going to be dependent on the implementation itself. But assuming the implementation is good and works consistently and well, this could probably deal with a lot of the weird oddities a tiler generally has. It is going to leave a lot of unused space, but I feel like for windows functioning like they should be, maybe it's worth it as an option. Now, maximizing a window, this is a simple one, and I kind of want to implement it on my own system. Basically, if you make the window full screen, it moves that full screen window over to another desktop, as opposed to what happens normally on Awesome, where if I have this window here, I full screen, this window still just stays behind it, so I have to go and unfull screen the window and then go back to it. It's just kind of annoying. If this moved it over to another workspace, then, you know, it might be a bit more convenient. But the other thing is it'll completely deal with the game issue. Games cause issues when there are multiple windows on the exact same desktop. If you just move the full screen game to a completely separate desktop, there's no issues to be had. I am trying to think of at least one reason why this might not be a good idea, but I can't come up with it. Now on my desktop, my workspaces are numbered, but on GNOME, you have the ability to just cycle through the workspaces, plus you have the workspace switcher, so you're not gonna have an issue with just running out of numbers. What's being called edge tiling is usually just called edge snapping. This is nothing that crazy, at least the first step. Windows has this feature, countless Linux desktops have this feature, I'm pretty sure macOS has this feature, it's a really nice feature, and I always love to see it. The thing that makes it really cool though, is being able to decide a tiling partner. So you snap to the edge, and then you can select one of the other windows here to fill up the rest of the space. This gives you a more standard tiling layout. Something kinda like this, I guess resize that, there you go. One thing I don't like about the mock-up, and this may just be a mock-up thing, is in the earlier demo, there were window gaps. In this case, it is a hard border against the window. Personally, I'm a big fan of window gaps, and I really hope they do make use of them. Especially when we have applications like terminals, it makes it a lot easier to distinguish between the two windows. One concern I do have with the edge tiling is a feature like this is really easy to use on a single display. You drag the window at the edge of the screen and it goes and makes the tile. The problem is when you have a multi-monitor display, you need to have some sort of buffer between the edge of the screen and where you want the tile to be made. If that buffer is too big, you might accidentally make a tile when you don't mean to. If it's too small, it might be really inconvenient to make use of the feature. While they're for sure going to do some user testing, I really hope they include some way to configure how wide that buffer is. 
And the last thing is being able to take one of these edge tiles and drag another window on top of it and then split that again. Now, due to there not being any borders here, it's really difficult to distinguish where the split is actually happening. Obviously, with actual application windows, it'll be a lot easier, but I really, really hope they make use of window gaps. Now, I would also imagine this was not said in the demo that you can probably resize the splits as well. So if you want this top window to be way smaller or way bigger, say you just have like a terminal window here and you just need like a single line prompt, for example, you probably don't need this entire space you have. But another thing that wasn't shown is being able to take this big tiling partner here and then being able to split that one. So drag a window on top of this one and then go from there. Maybe bringing it from another workspace or spawning it directly on this one. But it would seem really inconsistent if you couldn't split this one as well. Now, on the topic of spawning a window on this workspace. Now, we know that when you make this the tiling partner, all of the other windows move to another workspace. But what happens when you spawn a window on a workspace that is already covered in these tiles? Does that window automatically tile? Does it break the tiling? It needs to be clear what that behavior is. Personally, the behavior that I would expect is the window would automatically tile over the window I'm currently focused. So I'm focused on this window here. It'll split this one in half as if I've just dragged the window myself. The other thing I'm not sure about is if you can only do horizontal tiling. Or if I could drag a window, say, like here, and then it splits vertically instead. That was not shown in the demo, but a lot of split systems do make use of that. If we are calling the function arbitrary splits, it would be really weird if I couldn't easily make a three column layout, for example, or I couldn't go and make a master stack layout, or I couldn't go and make a grid layout, or any other layout that is commonly used on a tiler. Something also not touched on is how much of this is planned to be exposed for plugin developers. If I wanted to make a plugin that makes something more akin to Popshell, for example, could I use this system as a base and then work to that? Or if I wanted to implement a master stack layout or a grid layout that just automatically does the tiling for me, would I be able to do so? Or is this something that is just not going to be suitable with this system? And I'm sure you guys have plenty of other questions you'd want to ask as well. I think this is a really cool system though. Obviously, it is just a mock-up and is not implemented into the code base in any usable way. But I'm very excited to see where this goes because I'm very happy that everybody is finally accepting that tiling is better. KDE has native tiling. Cosmic Gnome has tiling with the pop shell. The Rust Cosmic is going to have native tiling as well. And finally, GNOME might have a proper tiling system as well. Right now you can do manual tiling by like snapping windows, but that's just not a convenient system to work with. I also don't really care this isn't the traditional way of doing tiling. I think that's actually a lot more exciting. We don't need another tiler doing the same thing as every other tiler. If you want that on GNOME, just go and use the pop show. I'm very curious to see if they can actually implement this system and how well it's going to play in the real world. Yes, there is still a place for floating, and I'm sure GNOME is just not going to get rid of the feature, but it is really cool to see them actually experiment with tiling. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use a tiler? Do you use GNOME? Do you think it's a really cool idea to try and mash the two things together? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Barrow Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Tylers of the Future.